Hello, this is David Seth with Brimstone Gunsmithing. The most common problem people have with a 1022 trigger job, whether they work on factory parts, they use a drop-in parts, is a failure for the trigger to reset. The reason for that is could be twofold. There are two things that can go wrong with that. Um, first off, imagine with me here, you've pulled the trigger, trigger comes back like that, the sear drops out of the notch in the hammer like that, the hammer goes forward, the round goes off, it comes back, those two arms on the back of the hammer here are going to hit the top of the disconnector and watch what they do. When it comes back, it moves the disconnector out of the way like that and frees the back edge of the sear from the lip on the disconnector. Now there's a spring that fits in here, it's called the sear spring, a very small spring, but when this is now free of the sear, this, that spring forces the sear up, snaps up like that. As the bolt begins to move forward, the hammer is going to follow it forward. It's going to rotate forward until it catches on the raised lip of the sear. Now, if you do not have sufficient sear hammer engagement right here, um, the hammer is just going to follow the bolt forward. It's either going to ignite another round, or you're going to go double or full auto, or it's just going to follow it home and it's going to sit there. And that will be the first cause for the trigger not resetting. Um, you will not be able to manually push the trigger forward. When you cycle the bolt, it will spit out a perfectly good round um, and the gun will cycle like it's supposed to, or at least pull the trigger and it will it will go boom like it's supposed to. Um, if that is what you're having, the other video I have, I believe it's titled the Ruger 1022 Trigger Job Fix or something like that, will tell you how to fix that problem. If, on the other hand, it does catch like this, it's locked up like it's supposed to, um, but, well, and then you can manually push the trigger forward, then this video will show you how to fix that. The factory trigger return spring requires about a pound and a half to two pounds of force to compress. That's quite a bit if you're aiming for a two pound or even a two and a half pound trigger pull. Um, that means you're gonna have to lighten everything else up quite a bit and more than you should in order to get that two or two and a half pound pull. So to reduce the pull weight, people will either clip a coil or two or whatever off the back of the spring, which is totally acceptable. Just go slow, take a, a coil or even half a coil off at a time, put it together and see what it did, see if it functions. Or if you bought an aftermarket hammer or something, oftentimes they will come with a lighter trigger return spring. That's fine. It lightens the trigger pull. Um, but whether they're factory parts or they're aftermarket parts, the finish is usually still pretty rough. And this fat or this lighter weight spring might not be enough to force all the parts to move past each other and reset the trigger like it should. Um, you can see here, uh, I have a factory sear. If we can get the light to hit it right, you will see how rough that back face is on the sear there. Here's a factory disconnector, and that lip on the disconnector also is fairly rough. So what happens is the trigger return spring, when you let up on the trigger, forces the trigger forward like that, and the disconnector, that little tiny lip on the disconnector, is going to slide down the back face of the sear until it snaps underneath. And that's that click that you hear when the trigger resets, is the sear or the disconnector snapping back under the face of the sear. Now, the common fix for these is that um, to go back to your factory weight spring. But in my opinion, that's just a Band-Aid. Um, that's just forcing the parts to do what they're supposed to with heavier springs instead of actually fixing the problem, which is the friction and how rough the parts are right in here between the back face of the disconnector or back face of the sear and that little lip on the disconnector. So here are some parts that I've already done. They're going to go into a customer's gun and you can see the difference. That is polished up to basically a mirror polish. It's 1500 grit. It's a worn piece of 1500 grit. So you get a very nice, very smooth ride on it. And if we can see it once again in the poor light, the lip of the disconnector has also been polished up. Now what that's going to do is it's going to allow the disconnector to slide down the back face of the sear very, very smoothly with very little effort. So you can have that lighter weight spring, your lighter trigger pull, and still have it function like it's supposed to. The other thing that I do, and you'll be able to see it here, you can see that the back face of the sear is no longer flat. It's actually radiused a little bit. On a factory sear, that rear edge is 
straight. You can kind of see the difference there. Um, that curve is going to allow the disconnector to slide more easily over it, obviously, and thereby make it even easier to reset. The thing you've got to be careful for is that if you round it too much and you take some, obviously you're just polishing, so it's, it's not going to be more than a thousandth or whatever, but if you're reducing the, the depth of that lip and increasing the curve, you might not have enough material holding there. So basically what will happen is, let's say you've done some work on it. Let's say it only takes three pounds of force now to pull the sear out of the hammer. But because you've reduced all these surfaces here, it might only take a pound of force to pop the disconnector off the back edge of the sear like that. And then when you pull the trigger, all it does is it, it pulls the, it snaps the disconnector or the, the disconnector off the back edge of the sear. So you'll just get a click instead of the gun actually firing. So you want to be really careful about that. Um, on our triggers at Brimstone, um, we round those because it lets us get a really light trigger reset, very smooth, very light, very positive. Um, but we also modify our disconnectors. This one has not been modified. That's top secret confidential information on what we do to the disconnectors to make it so that everything can engage like it's supposed to and work like it's supposed to. But if you are not going to be modifying your disconnector, which I don't necessarily recommend because it, you have to do it right or it, it can screw other things up, um, what I would recommend is just polishing the back edge of your disconnect or of your sear um, flat. Do not round it off. Now the way that I do this is pretty simple. Um, I just have a piece of sandpaper. This one is a piece of thousand grit. Um, when I do it, I start with uh, 220, go to 400, go to 1000, and then go to 1500 grit. I'd recommend you do the same. Just be very careful with the 220 and the 400 because those can remove quite a bit of material. Obviously, that's what we use to round off the sear. So you can remove quite a bit of material with that. But even just, just using 1000 grit here, you got a flat edge. I'm going to put it on my sandpaper like this, and I'm going to move it back and forth, and I'm going to try and maintain that flat edge. I'm kind of going to stick in one spot for the most part. Um, obviously, this 1000 grit. If I work on new stuff, it's going to remove faster. And if I work in the same spot, it's going to essentially become a finer and finer grit. I'm just going to work it back and forth here. And there you go. You can already see the difference. Um, that's going to, uh, it's going to help. It, it's not perfect. Um, you can't really see it very well in the camera, but um, in real life, there is still quite a bit of roughness in there. Um, but even that alone right there would probably be enough to make your rifle cycle. Um, if I were you, I would continue going, probably start with a, with a coarser grit. Um, you're probably going to end up rounding it off a little bit, and that's okay. Um, just don't do too much, especially on this bottom edge. Um, you want to continue to try and keep it as flat as possible. It's not crucial. It doesn't need to be absolutely perfect. When you look at it in the light, you probably will be able to see a little bit of curve just because that's human error, but that's okay. You just don't want to have too much. And then when I do the disconnector, what I do with that, I use a trusty old hacksaw blade for most polishing inside of small areas. I put the hacksaw blade inside the uh, crease of my sandpaper like that. Hold it. I usually brace this end against my chest or something to hold it kind of flat, but you go like that. And then I take my disconnector and just work it back and forth on that lip. And again, I think my light, light is too terrible for you to really be able to see what it will look like, but you want to kind of round it off a little bit, but not too much. Um, if you keep it flat and just polish it up, that will probably be sufficient. That's just a couple passes. It's better. I would keep going with that, but that right there is better even. Um, so not only will this allow you to have a lighter trigger return spring, uh, which would be a lighter trigger pull, but this will also result in a much smoother, much more positive, much crisper trigger reset, which is very nice. Um, again, this is the simple version of how we do it. Um, this is something that anybody can do. You're not really going to screw it up. Um, if you do, uh, the part you'll need to buy is a new disconnector. I think they cost about $3, so you're not going to be out too much. Um, if you do it and you round off everything too much and you're not able to get it, 
um, assuming you still have sufficient lip on here on the disconnector, you can just go back in and be more careful and flatten out the back edge of the sear and that will allow it to bind up again like it's supposed to. Um, again, here at Brimstone Gunsmithing we do a couple other things that are going to make it a little bit better than that, but if you've got aftermarket parts or factory parts and you're just having trouble with it resetting, um, that will fix your problem. Um, that will or should make it reset like it's supposed to. Again, if when it doesn't reset you are able to manually push the trigger forward and it resets, um, this should fix your problem without you having to put in heavier springs. So I hope that helps. If you have any questions, let us know. Um, as always, don't hesitate to ask. You can check out our website for all contact information. And uh, hope it helps. Have a good day. Safe shooting.